The topic of this video is using average rate of change to identify linear functions. When given a table of points, you can determine if the points represent a linear function or not. Simply compute the average rate of change, also known as slope, between each pair of adjacent points. If the average rate of change, the slope, is always the same, the points represent a linear function. Let's look at a problem. Determine if the given function is linear or nonlinear. Okay, we need to identify the slope between each pair of adjacent points. So for example, the first pair of points we'll compare will be these, and then the second pair of points we will compare will be these, and then the third pair of points we'll compare will be these. Now, one of the things that you have to understand when you're dealing with the slope formula is you need to identify which point is going to be point one and which point is going to be point two. And that can create confusion when you're using the same point more than once. So let's just agree on the following convention. We're gonna say that the top point will always be point one and the bottom point will always be point two. Let's note that over here. The top point will be point one, and the bottom point will be point two. Now, if you remember your slope formula, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that means that we're doing two minus one, which is bottom minus top. So I'm just gonna write here that we're gonna do bottom minus top for all of our slope calculations, and that should make this very easy to do so that we don't make any mistakes. Okay, let's start with our first pair of points and finding the slope. So we need to do the y values, bottom minus top. f of x and y are the same, so we do bottom minus top. One minus negative five. Then we need to do x values, bottom minus top. Zero minus negative two. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding, so we get 1 plus 5 over 0 plus 2, 6 divided by 2, which is 3. All right, let's move on to our next pair of points, the ones that have a blue outline. Once again, we're going to do bottom minus top, starting with the y's, so that will be 4 minus 1. And now the x's, 1 minus 0. 4 minus 1 is 3, 1 minus 0 is 1, 3 divided by 1 is 3. Notice that we got the same slope for these two pairs of adjacent points. So far it's looking like this might be a linear function, but we don't know for sure until we compare all pairs of adjacent points, and we have one pair left to go. All right, y's bottom minus top would be 13 minus 4. x's bottom minus top would be 4 minus 1. 13 minus 4 is 9, 4 minus 1 is 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. And so we find that all three pairs of adjacent points have the same slope. And for that reason, we can now conclude that this is a linear function. All right, let's do one more thing before we call this video done. Uh, whenever I present this problem, I always like to show the picture. Uh, I think the picture is very illustrative and helps students understand why these numbers all being the same creates a line or a linear function. So I'm just going to create a little bit of space here and we're going to make a small graph. My x's need to go from negative two to four. My y's need to go from negative 5 all the way up to 13. So let's see if we can make that happen. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, positive 10. 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2. All right, all of our points should fit now. 
Okay, let's plot all the points that we know to be on this particular function. So we've got negative 2, negative 5, so that would be down here. We've got 0, 1, that's the y-intercept. 1, 4, and 4, 13. So 4 and all the way up here would be 13. So then the question is, do these points form a straight line? If you can draw a straight line that goes right through the center of all of these points, then that is a visual proof that this is indeed a linear function. I'm drawing this as a dashed line because the line itself does not represent the function, only the points represent the function. But what we're trying to do is state that the function is a linear function because a straight line goes through all four of those points. So we can see very clearly that this is a linear function by looking at the graph, but algebraically by computing the slope between each adjacent pair of points and showing that that value is the same.